This is not the Yamaha, but this bike has been in our collection for a really long time. And it's been actually many years since I've ridden it. It stays tucked back of the cabin in the garage, covered up. And uh, unfortunately it's just life gets crazy and the Yamaha is right there with the keys and it fires up first kick. So unfortunately this bike is somewhat forgotten, but I've really wanted to do a video on it because in my opinion, it's one of the best dual purpose Enduros that you could get from the seventies, especially when you have a specific mission. Now this bike is a 1974 Honda XL175. This was a lineage of Enduros that Honda produced for nearly a decade. This is what eventually became the XR, which is the world's most beloved, bulletproof, everybody's ridden an XR. But the XL was a really special time because I feel that it was a very well-designed motorcycle. The price point was really good, reliability was incredible, and it just served a purpose of a good, easy to start, easy to work on motorcycle that you could load up in the back of the truck, you could ride it to work, you could go ride it on trails, it served a multitude of purposes. So this was produced in April of 1974. This is a four stroke 175 cc engine mated to a five speed transmission. And Honda truly has adapted and specialized in the four stroke air cooled motorcycle realm. They really, in my opinion, produced one of the best four stroke motorcycle engines. Uh, for an enduro, especially in the 70s. I think that they really just I mean think about this bike is how old it is And I would ride this tomorrow to another state This is as I said earlier 175 cc four-stroke. It makes an incredible 10 horsepower and a neck breaking 11 foot-pounds of torque now you could get the XL series in a multitude of engine sizes actually XL 80, 125, 175, 250, 300, 500. They had a whole series of them. And uh, really, it serves the purpose of this bike and the specific needs of the person is what makes it so great. Price point of these. Well, they used to be practically given away for free 20 years ago. 10 years ago, you could pick one up for... 500 bucks to a thousand bucks they're starting to get more collectible unfortunately this one is in really really good shape part of the reason why we don't ride it that much i mean this is all original everything including the seat shocks everything in fact the last time it had plates on it was in the year 2000 24 years ago which is absolutely mind-boggling how it doesn't seem like 24 years ago uh 3, miles on the odometer now as the Speedo says, this is one of the few Speedos that do not lie from the manufacturer. This literally has a top speed of 70 miles an hour, yielded by this amazing 10 horsepower of fierce ferociousness, I should say. Redline is right at 9,000 RPM, and I would say the power curve on this is actually very linear. Unfortunately, when we go ride it today, I won't be able to do a top speed test because the Speedo cable is actually not there. I've ordered a new one and haven't put it on yet, but We'll go ride it, and at least you can get a good idea of what it's like to ride one of these. Uh, and the bells and whistles. This is a street legal Enduro. And what I mean by street legal is you can literally get plates on it and go ride it on the city streets, even though it looks like a straight up dirt bike. It has turn signals, left, right, horn, highs, lows on the beams, brake lights, uh, everything you would need to essentially ride it just like a regular motorcycle. I, why I really like these is because they serve a purpose that makes them very, you, I don't know, well-rounded. Ride them in the city. You can ride them on the trails. You can load your girlfriend on the back. They're compact. The gas mileage on these is absolutely phenomenal. 130, 140 miles to a tank, 3.3 gallon tank. Uh, very simple, very easy to work on. Uh, drum brakes, front and rear, which aren't the best in comparative to today's tech with disc brakes, but they still do their purpose and they work just fine in my opinion. Like I said earlier with price point, expect roughly about, you might be able to find a good deal around 1500 bucks, but realistically three to 6,000 for a really nice example. That's street legal and not beat up and is all original. These, in my opinion, if somebody asks, well, would you choose, you know, 
another motorcycle manufacturer. Honda specifically made this to compete with Yamaha's DT, Suzuki's SP series, Kawasaki's KE series, and really they outperformed a lot of the other motorcycle manufacturers with a really renowned, reliable motorcycle. Uh, I would say the weak points of these. Well, this is a four stroke. They sit a long time, valves can, uh, valve seats can leak, it can smoke, and rebuilding one is more complex than a two stroke, but not unbelievably complex. They do have timing chain uh, tensioner issues over time. I've never experienced it with one of these. Uh, and that's worst case example. It's very rare for these to do that type of thing. If you change the oil often, I just run straight up 1540 or 2050 and run good gas, they always start. What I meant by this was what made me appreciate this motorcycle is I have not ridden this in nearly six years. We put gas in it, I put a new battery in it, and it fired up fifth kick. There's not a lot of motorcycles that'll do that. I'm not saying that no motorcycles will do that, but it just shows that you can really trust the reliability and simplicity of these motorcycles. And they're just a good all around enduro from the 70s. I also, what I really appreciate about these motorcycles is the overall design aesthetics. It's a very appealing motorcycle to the eyes. The twin shocks in the rear, the chrome wheels, the motor design, the air cooled, everything about it and the color scheme in my opinion, is probably one of the better looking enduro examples from the 70s. I mean, the original sticker is as helmet holder. You can tie your helmet off. I think that's so neat. Um, this is for if you want to pop open the seat. This is kickstart only. Later variants did come with electric start, but this is kickstart only. Is it a pain to kickstart? Absolutely not. Probably one of the easier motorcycles to kickstart in my opinion. Uh, there's no kickback on the compression like some do. This has passenger pegs, which is wonderful for hauling it around. If you were 300 pounds or 250 pounds, a 175 might not be the right choice for you. I would actually opt for the 250 or even the 500. That'll serve your purpose a lot better. If you're short, under 250 pounds, this is a great motorcycle. Do not expect a ton of acceleration out of these in comparison to a two-stroke 175 of the same class. My Yamaha DT175 would probably walk away with it from this uh, at a fairly good distance. So consider that, that these are not near as fast as a two-stroke 175, but they're still fun fast. And what I mean, be, what I mean by that is that they pull all the way through the RPM band and really just do what you would expect out of a 175 and more. All right, well, let's go ride this motorcycle and give you a perspective of what it's like to ride a 1974 Honda XL 175. All right, first we're gonna turn on the key. And we got our neutral light. She is cold, so I'm gonna let her warm up. The choke is on right now. These are really easy to ride in my opinion. The torque is instant, pulls all the way through. It's really linear. Some branches to avoid here. <laughs> I 
The suspension is amazing for the year, but it's not amazing by today's standards. In fact, it's almost non-existent. So don't expect to be hitting massive jumps with one of these. This is truly uh, just a trail bike and a modest trail bike at most. you what the acceleration is like but unfortunately I don't have a speed measurement of speed as I bought a new speedo cable and it has not come yet but here we go Well, can it climb a good hill? Well, that's a pretty big hill. Let's give it a shot. Oh, got some rocks here. Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Tell you what, for like a little 175 cc four stroke, I mean it really does. Like I said, it, it performs exactly what you would need out of an old 70s enduro. Like, you gotta think about it. this isn't a new bike, this is 60 years old. 70 years, sorry, 50 years old. My math is terrible, but and it still put a smile on my face. That was fun, just ripping it down that dirt road. And it sounds so good, like, I don't know. I, th I think, unfortunately, the wind might be, noise might be too much, but uh, for the audio to pick up the symphony of an exhaust note, but I think it sounds great for a little single engine, 175 cc four stroke uh top speed wise i mean it this bike feels fast i'm smiling right now because i haven't really had a chance to re really open it up i rode it around earlier a little bit but it's been many years since i've actually got to open this up and ride it uh, aggressively on the dirt road and that put a smile on my face so i forgot how much fun this bike is i need to ride it more i feel bad life gets kind of crazy it's hard to keep up with maintaining stuff and riding everything and but this is one of those bikes you put some gas in it and a fresh battery and it starts right up so if you are considering one of these absolutely 100 percent, i recommend one of these they're they're they really are just a great all-around bike they're easy to learn on if you're a new rider and if you're an experienced rider they they still put a smile on your face like i've ridden thousand cc you know everything but leader bikes every motocross bike imaginable and this little 175 put a smile on my face so that says something about these uh, like i said if you are looking for one three things to look out for rust in the tank you want to make sure obviously this tank is very clean because well it doesn't get really, oh you gotta be kidding me well, make sure you don't get debris in your tank either like an idiot <laughs> um, but make sure there's not rust in the tank 
timing chain, uh, you know, make sure there's not a lot of noise. You can start these up, they should be quiet. You do not want loud valve train noise, timing chain noise, any of that stuff. Transmission shouldn't pop out of gear. Should fairly be easy to start. I'm not saying it'll start on the first kick, but it should start by the fifth kick, especially if it's cold. That's one thing to consider is easy to start. Um, these can be a pain to start if they got low compression or other, something else is wrong, uh, but they're also easy to figure out. Plenty of parts, easy to get for those online, everywhere. These are plentiful. Honda made thousands of these. And like I said, find the right bike for you. 175 might not be the right bike for you. If you're an experienced rider, you're tall, you're heavy. Sorry, I'm just saying, go for a 500. If you're a new rider, you want something that's lightweight, nimble, and you don't need to go 90 miles an hour, well, 175 will do its purpose. So hopefully that sheds some light on this phenomenal enduro from the 70s. In my opinion, one of the more iconic enduros from the 70s. And I gotta make sure I don't got any debris in that gas cap so I can ride home. Hopefully you enjoyed this, guys. Thanks for watching. My 1974 Honda XL 175.